Hello and welcome to Skander Knits. My name is Ellie and I am a Norwegian living and knitting in London. And you can find me on Instagram as Skander and I am Skander Knits as a designer on Ravelry. And Skander Knits is also the name of my Ravelry group, so do not forget to join there if you want to take part in any knit alongs, potential giveaways, take part in the Skander Knits community, get help with questions about my patterns, Norwegian knitting, whatever strikes your fancy it's kind of where it's going on so yeah for anything to do with skin and it's uh that's where you want to be wow where was i going with this hello welcome i skipped a week and i guess i don't know what i'm saying anymore if you're a new viewer normally i uh, release a week a weekly video about me just talking about knitting yeah once a week wow i am really out of it uh, I'm also recording on a Sunday today, which I don't usually do, and the sun is like in a completely different position than it normally is, which will hopefully be an improvement uh, to regular viewers who will know that the sun is often my number one, <laughs> one like nemesis when recording. So yeah, welcome back, returning viewers. It's the uh, uh, yeah same old here. So I think I have a lot to get through today, just judging by the pile of stuff around and what have you, so I'm just going to jump straight into it. I am running a number of knit alongs. I am running the year long knit along of 2019, where we aim to make six pairs of colour work mittens for the duration of 2019. In addition to that, I am running the several mitten knit along and club, where basically I knit any of the mittens that are part of my third Selber mitten club that you basically can join by buying the collection on on Ravelry and to new viewers uh it will look a bit weird because there will only be two patterns in there by the time I'm putting this video up that's by design because you are only going to get one pattern per month and only two have come out thus far so by that logic there's never really too late to join but depending on when you join you will be waiting for more patterns to come out and there will be kind of surprise patterns but they do come out in full um and the next pattern is going to come out at the beginning of November then there's the December pattern and then the January pattern and then the collection is complete. So yeah, and yeah, you can double dip in the knit alongs for the Cerebral Mitting Club and the Year Long Mitt Along, of course. And uh, what else is there? Oh, Corsica of the Cow. It's to knit my Corsica of the pattern. That that will also be due at the end of the, end of the year. So yeah, gonna have to come up with new knit alongs at the end of the year, <laughs> at the beginning, at the, in the next year, wow. When one year ends, the other starts. That's the thing I should have learned after 30 years almost. Wow. Yeah, let's not talk about that. So, aside from knit alongs, I have new patterns. Yes, plural. Where do we begin? Well, I am actually wearing both of the new patterns. I couldn't help myself from releasing them both at the same time because they go so well together. And they use the same yarn at the same gauge so they kind of feel like they belong together that was never the intention but i took a good long walk out this morning it was basically a, a breakfast time to late lunch time walk just going to the park getting my patterns photographed and having a nice sort of street food market brunch lunch thing it was probably lunch and I'm having a moment, I'm going to talk about the patterns in a bit, but I'm having this like me made moment. I don't usually even use that word, but there's something truly empowering about having a full on self made outfit. I mean, sure, my leggings are like just store bought or whatever, but like both my cardigan and my skirt have been knitted by me. So going to talk about the two patterns in turn and after I talked about the patterns I'm going to talk about the stuff that I have knitted since the last time we saw each other. There are some new cast ons there so that'll be exciting and then I'm going to talk about new acquisitions and then some stuff that I have been watching on uh, you know Netflix and Prime and all that stuff. Uh, so yeah the patterns. Okay I'm going to get out into it. I've shown you this before and I've teased that the pattern will come out but I needed to photograph it and I was waiting for um the autumn leaves to you know show themselves and they really haven't yet it's still quite green in london there's hints of orange on most of the trees but it's not full on and i can't really wait much longer so i just whatever it's fine i'm just gonna go with what we have uh and more than anything my 
lovely and beautiful friend Christina who offered to test knit this time around even though I wasn't really gonna have test knitters I was like fine you can do it uh, and then she took amazing photos uh, so I'm like okay I guess I have what I need <laughs> but I've taken photos of myself as well because while we both made a car the same pattern in the same color we have very different shapes and sizes and I thought it would be good to show both and it might actually be easier to compare the fit on different bodies when it's actually the same color so hey <laughs> but anyway anyway this is what we're dealing with whoop, whoop, whoop. so that's the cardigan this is called host that's Norwegian for autumn we actually have two words for autumn in Norwegian host and host they may sound the same to you but they are from the two different written forms of Norwegian so ha huh. Look at that, it fits pretty well. I am just, oh, this was so fun to make. I might just, oh, could almost do another one. It's, it's one of those patterns that keeps on giving because there's always something new happening everywhere. You're not gonna be on like stuck in an island for too long anywhere. Uh, maybe for the sleeves, but honestly that didn't bother me. I found them quite quick. Um, so that's the pattern that's come out. I gosh it's been a while since I bound it off even it's a very thin fabric so it's one of those things that I often find that I need in my wardrobe because as I'm sure everyone who has been to a yarn show have experienced and uh, anywhere else too it's like you want to bring your knitwear but you eventually have to take it off and put it in a bag and then it's taking up all your bag and are you really going to just be carrying this big lump of sweater all the time no so I quite like to have some very thin light sweaters in my wardrobe so this is one of those it doesn't weigh that much it doesn't take up that much room it doesn't super make me overheat or anything um yeah I reckon most people like probably use a, a four millimeter needle or something like that I use the 4.5 because I knit pretty tight um uh, yeah so it's a kind of like a DK gauge but for a sport to fingering weight pure wool I have used Navia Duo because I'm trying to knit from stash uh, but I found Navia Duo to be a bit harder to come by lately. It used to be like a yarn that you could find anywhere and now it's not but it's close to identical with Finul. It's not the same sheep breed or anything but they are similar enough. They knit up exactly the same in my opinion. In fact, um, yeah, I actually ended up combining a little bit of it for my skirt which we're going to talk about in a bit. Uh, the construction I absolutely love. I never really thought I would enjoy a uh, bottom-up fitted cardigan like this. Usually I like them top down so it's easy to adjust for length but actually this cardigan is super easy to adjust for length um, bottom-up because once you've knitted through the lace that's when you adjust for length from the top of the lace to under the arm and you just knit this longer if you don't want a crop top and it will work just as well for a full length cardigan and it's actually easier in that direction because imagine if you were to knit it top down right and then you have to know how long to knit before this whole bit left it's not as easy <laughs> so that's not as easy i mean i can i could figure it out probably i'm not going to make everyone do that so i will actually say that this was a much a better process bottom up and then the sleeves are top down so they will be easier to adjust for length top down the way you may be used to uh, i put a lot of thought and effort into shoulder fit so i'm really really proud about that i feel like there's great mobility here for me and the shoulders fit pretty well uh again if you find that you may have had a more narrow or broader shoulders than the sizing standard for your boss measurement that will be so easy to adjust for because if you look here this um, uh, again remember it's bottom up you will start decreasing for the curve around your armhole basically if you want to modify you want more narrow shoulders you decrease more if you want wider shoulders than the pattern decrease less yeah so basically replace a a decrease round with a stocking at round replace a stocking at round with the decrease round depending on if you want more or less 
yeah that's just a, a modification tip you don't obviously ha you don't have to modify anything it's just in case that's something you're worried about i don't know i always think it's a really cool thing that people modify my patterns it, it, i know some designers feel very kind of easily offended by that i i really think it's exciting when people do that i've seen people do my mission patterns and they've done them fingerless and convertible thumbs and stuff like that and i just I, I like that. I, I, I like to see people's creativity with my patterns for their projects. So, I was talking about yarn. Right. Um, so yeah, Fienel, it would be my number one recommendation for a yarn that is suitable and easily available. You can get it from, I think, the Woolly Thistle and Isolda. That will cover most of the world, the knitting western world, if anything. I'm pretty sure they both ship globally. Um, yeah, but Navio Duo is good. Tove by Sunless, Usk by Hillesfog, um, Tukey Wool Fingering should be great. And the list goes on. As long as you're happy making a 20 stitch gauge with that yarn. Um, so I wouldn't go for any lighter yarn. Like, I'm sure lots of people wonder, hmm, hold super soft though. That might be on the slightly looser side. It might be fine too. You just watch and see if you like the fabric. And if you don't, double it. <laughs> basically i think you could go either way but definitely fino will be amazing and uh, yes it uh, will have a introductory discount code i'm gonna put on here i tend to think about what i call them later as i edit and how much they will knock on the pr knock off the price whatever <laughs> uh so yeah obviously don't feel like you have to use it but it's always my pleasure to give back to people who want to support my patterns early on to make them you know trend a bit on Ravelry and that kind of thing is always helpful for me to reach more people so thank you so much for your support as ever um what else is there to say I try to limit the number of twisted stitches from the wrong side on this one so there was twisted rib but actually the only time you will have to twist the pearls is the bottom band and the top of the neckline so just a couple of rows I really don't like twisted pearls so rest assured it's been kept to a very soft minimum uh other things to note um there are some steaks that you may not be used to so you may know the usual front cardigan steak and some people are more familiar now with sleeve steaks now They're, they've come up in a few patterns uh, more on that in projects um but there is also a neckline steak so these sides here used to be connected and that may look really strange on your needles when you're working on it and you're gonna be like it's a very small neck opening but you cut it open and it will open up and if you're unsure what that means i posted a picture on my instagram and you can also find it in my host projects basically showing how it looked before and after cutting uh it is really quite a magic trick and i'm sure you're gonna enjoy doing that as much as i did because it's pretty satisfying like already doing a stick is satisfying um but the neckline one i mean you just like you go from something that looks like i don't know a zipper hoodie <laughs> to a round neckline so have fun with that uh any comforting notes about steaking uh you really only need two things to steak arguably three the main thing is to use the flow chart that i have made I can't remember if I put that on the page for this pattern, but it will be on the pattern page on Ravelry for Kusa Kofta. At the very bottom there, you can see it. It's available for free. You don't have to buy the pattern to see it. It's a flowchart to tell you how to find out if you can just cut through the yarn without a sewing machine. Uh, so once you have gone through this flow chart and you do know that you can just cut, you may want to use the crochet stabilizer or reinforcement as it's commonly referred to as, um, then you only need the Very Pink Knits tutorial. So that's Very Pink Knits. And if you don't even follow our tutorials, oh, do you have a treat ahead of you? So that, those are the two things you need. The flow chart that I made and her video. The reason I said arguably three uh, is in case you do need a sewing machine in case you've chosen a superwash yarn or something like that um, I don't have any videos on that I don't really sew particularly well myself um, but if you uh, I'm gonna write some search terms here in Norwegian that could help you locate some videos 
uh, on YouTube that will be in Norwegian, but they will demonstrate how they do it. Um, but yeah, if anyone out there likes to sew uh, their sticks and have maybe some time to spare to do a tutorial on that, I think the English language speaking part of the world would greatly appreciate that. So that's, you know, a gap in the market for tutorial makers out there if you, yeah, want to corner that, I guess. <laughs> So yeah, a bit of sticking information for me there. Uh, you can also do back stitches by hand if you want to really spend a lot of time on it. Um, but yeah, that's basically what there is to it. Obviously you could also modify to do this flat if you really do enjoy that. I don't know why you would, but you, if you are comfortable modifying, then yeah, for sure you could. Um, size host in its entirety. I love this thing and I'm going to wear it so much now that I've photographed it and don't need to worry about pilling. But having said that, I did wear this up at Yarndale the whole day, the whole time. It looks really good. There is no wear. I had like lots of bags around my shoulders, rubbing against my cardigan. So that's basically all I have to say about host. So I hope you will enjoy that pattern. I am immensely proud of it in case you can't tell. I'm just, I want to design more cardigans like this. Like not obviously the same, but I, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of it. So let's take a moment of pride and then move on to the other thing I've designed that just came off my needle. So we're kind of segueing into finished objects, but also new patterns. Uh, this, this skirt. So anyone who's ever run into me anywhere will know that my uniform is my little black skirt, right? I've got just the whole wardrobe of small black skirts. So sort of just above the knee length, fit and flare kind of skater skirts. It's my go-to. And I have just really wanted to knit a skirt. And so I did. And I have managed to, you know, there's not... Most of the time when I knit something, I'm not 100% happy with what I've made. I'm like, uh, just up there. Like, I won't finish something I'm not happy with. I'm going to frog until I, you know, I'm going to tweak and whatever. I am so ridiculously pleased with this skirt. It's, it, it's up there at 100%. I have nothing that I would change about this skirt. There's very rarely I can say that, like, oh, if I was going to do it again, I would probably do this and this. No. This skirt, I, I never designed a skirt before and this is perfect. Uh, can I can I just be shameless enough to say that this skirt is everything I wanted. I'm so pleased with it. I have just, it is, so okay. I'm, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna do a bit of a, a bit of a real talk. So I'm gonna get up on my, okay. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm kind of bending my knees so you can see it properly. Look at that, look at that. It's the best fit, whoa. So yeah, basically when I stand straight, it's straight, it's not like, you know. <laughs> so, so as you can see, there's a folded hem here. You basically knit together the last couple of stitches you have. It's a couple of stitches, I said, uh, hundreds of them. And you bind that off to further up the stocking net. Um, I'm basically gonna instruct you to pull a contrast colored yarn through your stitches when you're at this point in the skirt and then once you knit it all the way down and around you basically bind bind off along with those stitches that are on that scrap yarn so it'll be really easy to find and make sure it's parallel you're not going to miss a stitch yeah so whoa i should not be getting out of breath just by getting on my chair that's quite alarming in my defense i've been on a long walk today <laughs> And also I want to show you the waist, goodness me, the waist is also folded and it has an elastic in it and, oh yeah, burgundy, gotta have some burgundy in here. Uh, it sits really well and it's so easy to adjust the fit. I mean, I'm sure I could have worn it without the elastic, but it could also easily be pulled down if anyone just want to tug my skirt gently because it's knit fabric and that's what it does. It's just not super swoopy. Swoopy. <laughs> so, yes. Definitely recommend putting in an elastic and I recommend putting in an elastic that is these dimensions So it just fits so well and okay This is when I'm gonna have a moment that a moment that I had today because 
recently my waist measurements may have gone a little bit up and I don't mind I'm just gonna get larger skirts and one day my smaller skirt may or may not fit again and I am not really too worried about it I'm in a very just eh place right now with the work demands that I have and just stuff you don't want to hear about to be honest but so I know I'm just not very hard on myself for having to <laughs> go over my wardrobe and get stuff that fit and spend money on that and whatever when I like to keep it quite quite small and I got to a point where I was just like you know what I'm just gonna get this skirt that I really love in my wardrobe the same skirt in the bigger size no big deal and I go into the shop and I find that the skirt that I was already wearing was the biggest size they offered surprise so I'm kind of like wow okay so the places that I am now going to get my skirts don't make skirt my size and I don't think my waist measurements are that uncommon so it kind of leads us back to the conversations we've had earlier about size inclusivity and you know the kind of biased exclusion of larger sizes even though they are very very much within the normal curve Ugh. so that's not even why I knitted this skirt because I started knitting this skirt quite a long time ago but when I put in that elastic and I adapted it to my measurements to fit comfortably but you know firmly so it doesn't fall off and just sew that on exactly where I wanted to and put the skirt on and it fit perfectly not making me feel like I was wearing a skirt that was too big or too small it was just made for me and I just had a moment that, that just that sense of empowerment for having made your own clothes that are supposed to fit you. You're not supposed to fit your clothes. They are supposed to fit you. Uh, it just, yeah, I had a moment. It's, that's what I'm gonna say. And I felt amazing, like just walking out today in these two knitted items, going to photograph them, having lots of people stare at me for standing there with a tripod and a remote shutter app on my phone and just be like, why is it not working? And just looking real annoyed, especially at the people looking at me and I'm just like, mind your own business. I still felt great, annoyed like I usually am when people can't mind their business, but I felt amazing just wearing these things. I'm just like, got my act together, you know? Uh, it's it's really empowering. Like, it's not a word that I throw around easily, but yeah, um, this skirt just gave me a lot of joy, not just for the sheer accomplishment of making a knitted item that I made up completely from scratch, that ticked up all the boxes, that did exactly what I wanted it to be, that I wouldn't change in any way if I were to do it again. And just, the list goes on. It, I'm, I'm very proud. I wish it was colder more often so I could wear it all the time, basically. I just, yeah. I've heard it's gonna be quite cold this winter, so that makes me excited. So, I'm gonna talk a bit more about the pattern. Um, I have used a sport weight yarn. I actually used Navia Duo again, which is a pure coincidence. I'm not like Navia Duo obsessed. It just seems to be a yarn that I have in my stash because I quite like it. It used to be the sort of female equivalent that I could get more easily in the UK, though now not so much apparently. So yeah, I've just been trying to knit that up. But you could use black if you knew, or you don't even have to use black yarn. Even though it's called the little black skirt, guess what? You can use whatever color you want. In fact, I was toying with the idea of using bit of color work down here but I eventually just decided against it because I wanted to work with my everything in my wardrobe I wanted to just fit really well and just I thought keep it simple so yeah but yeah having said that I use Navia duo and that you could use Fiona what I will say is that this skirt is quite weight independent not entirely but it's like the cardigan, it's knit on a 20 stitch gauge and that's normally a DK gauge but I thought it's a skirt, it's going to be a lot of fabric, there's a lot of fabric in this <laughs> It. I want it to be quite light and I thought that the kind of sweet spot there between not too heavy but not too see-through was sport weight so that's what I went with but you could definitely go with DK if you want it to be more dense and you don't mind it being heavier. Maybe you're doing a smaller size and it won't actually weigh that much. 
or you could go with fingering weight if you actually don't mind it being a little bit thin and there are lots of yarns that you know puff up and close and i'm i'm sure yarns like loft by brooklyn tweed will be amazing for both the cardigan and the skirt so it's kind of like whatever works at that gauge and a lot of things work at that gauge so i have made it quite row gauge independent because of that because obviously if you use a different yarn weight than i use or even a different kind of quality of yarn you will get a different row gauge so the pattern isn't really written with a particular row gauge in mind so you don't really have to worry about that i found that quite freeing so you're basically just going to keep increasing at a certain measurement rate until you have your full length that's basically what the skirt does yeah so again i will have an early bird discount i didn't say that for the cardigan the same thing for both it will be a code that you can apply if you want a discount if you buy the pattern early because the discount is only valid for a couple of days so i will offer that to whoever wants to use it if you want to support my patterns early on because the first couple of days when a pattern comes out is often the most kind of like it's the time when you have the biggest chance of reaching people outside your customer base i guess so that's yeah something you can use if you want to if you want to knit a skirt i will highly recommend it i'll admit when i started knitting it i thought it's not not gonna be for everyone the skirt is a bit of a niche thing to knit i'm sure it's now i'm just like nope nope everyone needs a knitted skirt if not this then a skirt just i it, it's just given me a lot this skirt i having just a wardrobe full of skirts that like not none of them fit optimally some of them just a bit too long for my taste because the more size inclusive shops that i know make skirts that are longer than i prefer and obviously a lot of them are quite tight and they make me feel quite you know kind of choked around my waist and that just now i just have this skirt that i made every little stitch i made and i ran out of yarn I had six skeins of Navia Duo that I bought at the very end of Edinburgh Yarn Festival this year in a, a local shop in Edinburgh. I think it was Be Inspired Fiber. And I think they were selling it out, so I wouldn't look for it there. Um, but you know, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I had six skeins. And after I had half a round left before the bind off, I was out of yarn. So I actually used a bit of black phenol to bind off. I don't think you can tell the difference at all. See this little braid here? This is my little neat bind off. I don't know, maybe you can tell this difference slightly. Yeah. So that will go into my yarn requirement thing. Uh, so I guess my size is the size that is the tipping point between six gains and seven. Oh well so yeah those are my two patterns you can make yourself a nice little outfit there one of my test knitters actually did and she did both the skirt and the cardigan uh, together and they look pretty cool so that's definitely a thing that you can do and at last we are ready to talk about my works in progress i've got three to share with you and i am pretty excited about all of them but I can't really be working on them for that much more. It's quite, it, it's not great. I'm looking at all my projects as I normally do and I have a moment of realization while recording on here. Um, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six bags of knitting projects ahead of me that I need to focus on for the remainder of this month. Yeah. So I uh, can't really be knitting on much else and those projects are qu most of them quite secretive. Uh, you do know about Wutra and Icelander of course and the sweater hug but generally they're quite shush. So first project that I, oh I want to knit a little bit more but I, I, forgot, I can't. It lives in this beautiful bag that I bought from Third Volt Yarns. Okay that way maybe yeah so it's in this really cool bag that i used for my skirt but now that it's been freed up i could put this project that's just been laying on my desk 
it's my boohoos so as you'll know i've been powering through you all know that i didn't record that i've been powering through all the stocking that it's actually pretty quick you're stocking that you don't even have to think i just i just kept going and i'm oh there's yarn there's yarn devonia dk by john arben hallelujah and then the yoke i'm not gonna brag about my tension on this one because it's uh boohoo's it's inspired by the boohoo's round yolks that incorporated purling to have a bit of texture in the color work yolks and uh that's what this pattern features as well i'm not sure i could keep a very good tension while doing that it's not awful it's just kind of a bit looser so maybe i shouldn't have gone up needle size the way i normally do but it's it's okay it will block it. it's fine i think i'm just being very picky the colors it's a little bit outside my comfort zone if anything the main color obviously not i have been wearing this color whilst knitting on it um it's a very dark purple if that tells you anything uh but the contrast color is very much not my comfort zone orange sage green the blue i do like it's very me it's different, but it works. I like it. There's a steek for the armhole. Yes, it has steeks in the pattern. Thank you, Carol Feller. So yeah, that's gonna be cut through. And I have been reassured by lovely viewers that it should be fine to cut through even though it's worsted spun. I usually feel more safe to cut through woolen spun yarn, but I've heard on good authority that you can get away with sticking this as well uh i may combine um the crochet method with some back stitching as well just to be safe and when i tacked on the sleek after that i am not worried so i think there won't be any sewing machine happening on this especially because i don't have one <laughs> so there boohoo's made progress i watched a lot of <laughs> tv series while watching this i'm going to talk a bit more about that at the end of the video or in part two depending on what i choose to do but oh my god do i have a lot of good things to say about not just this pattern but the yarn i think i have kind of i mean i've always loved john arben yarns but i have kind of maybe come to love it even more uh not just this yarn that i have actually kind of dismissed up until actually knitting with it actually actually um and now I just love it and someone actually recently just told me that knit by numbers that's a very soft folklore merino that i always just assumed will pill like forever because i have heard from people that it does pill a lot and i thought well if it's gonna do that i may trade off that softness with the pilliness and just not yeah but now i've talked to some people who actually have stuff in knit by numbers that they wear every day and once you've done the initial d pill that you will have to do on most knitted items it actually doesn't peel anymore and it looked really good so i'm like i think i will be knitting more from knit by numbers in the future because ooh, ooh, nice and it's very soft and non super wash but yeah this is devonia dk i love it i love the sweater i look forward to have it finished uh i just i can't be knitting on it right now because yeah don't have time sorry sweater really want to <laughs> it's hard but you know what if you have a sweater you really want to knit on and you're not allowing yourself to at least you're not going to be casting on anything new right right i mean that logic would hold up if you were anyone but me uh so in my beautiful hide and hammer bag that i finally started using i'm kind of like saving these bags for last because i feel a bit more like the project better be worthy of this bag and i think this project is it's really fun i got through a lot of it <sighs> just yeah i got through a lot of it very quickly and i think it will be finished soon if it weren't for the fact that i now have to strictly focus on deadline nets it is a mohair lump it is the love note sweater by tin can Knits that everyone and their dog are knitting this is love note yes so there is a bit of acquisitions in this project because whilst I have, I already had this silk mohair yarn in my stash already. This is onion yarn, their silk mohair, which is a quite affordable silk mohair 
yet it has the same silk percentage as fancy schmancy silk my hairs like she booby has 40 percent silk and 60 percent kid my hair shiny very shiny it's very true to color here actually it's quite dark but shiny so i thought you know what love knot would be perfect for that uh and if i get a yarn that goes well with it like this other onion yarn this is nettle sock yarn now while the pattern recommended a single ply merino you guys know how i feel about knitting garments in single ply merino no don't, don't i mean you do you but i i wouldn't this uses 70 percent wool and 30 percent nettle fiber and it feels really nice you would expect maybe some kind of linen feel to it but no it is absolutely lovely and certainly a lot stronger than a single ply merino so i'm not single ply merino shaming you if you like that it's fine it's fine it's fine so yeah i thought combine these two should make a really good love note and the color isn't you know out of my comfort zone exactly so this is this is love note and as you can see, I'm both working on the body and on the sleeves. So in addition to buying the base yarn, not the silk mire, but the other yarn, I have also bought new needles. This was something I picked up at the Knitting and Stitching show in London, which I'll talk more about in acquisitions. And it's the Zing needles, but they have kind of pimped them up a little bit. So apparently, I got the long and the short for six millimeters these are meant to measure the inches of whatever you're knitting so i think one stripe is one inch if i'm not entirely wrong but it also writes on the needles um the centimeters yeah so you can basically find out how much you have knitted simply by using the needle that you're knitting with i haven't actually done it myself because i still kind of just trust my my measuring tape but in case not these are really clever uh, I have mixed feelings about Knit Pro. Uh, they used to be my favourite needles back in like 2012 and up until 2016, 17. Kind of fell out of favour with me a little bit. I use the needles all the time. I have three, four, five full collections of interchangeables. I basically have Nova, regular Nova, large Nova, short um symphony dreams and zings i was given the zings for review and the other ones i purchased so clearly i like them but i have found there's been issues with the joints since they underwent some changes a couple of years ago so they are not as smooth as they used to be they may be harder to screw on the needles there's one of these needles i think it was one of the shorter ones really hard to get screw on properly on the on the joint but on the plus side i find that knit pros are the least likely needles to come untwisted it does happen it's annoying but i find it less likely than my other favorites chagu and higher higher so, pros and cons i guess the cables are also okay they're not great they're not bad they're just they're okay so yeah still a happy knit pro needle user even though they're no longer my favorites i definitely like using them for this kind of thing and i also like how the zings aren't super sharp like they're not blunt but they're not gonna hurt your skin because this is a bit gross but this is the look on my finger right now I'm, it's not gonna focus you probably thank me for not showing you but it has like a pretty considerable dent in it that if i was using a higher higher sharp would hurt a lot so that's you know i always push the needle because i knit tight it's just the thing uh so if, if you have that problem and you're like but i want to use my sharp needles and get some knit pros nothing wrong with a blunt needle i i don't agree that the sharper the needle the better the needle it's entirely down to what you as a knitter prefer and down to what you're knitting with i would want a sharper needle for a slicker yarn but i prefer a more blunt needle for a fuzzier yarn like a like fienerd for instance i have made a cardigan out of fienerd in higher higher sharps and i at the end of the cardigan was like why did I do that to myself? I should have just gone with some blunter needles because they were just really painful. So yeah, you, you learn that different needles are good for different things. And it's 
all down to personal preference. So, how is that for a diplomatic conclusion? So yeah, Love Note should be finished by now, really, at the speed I've been working at it. But I just have to focus on these deadline edits. I'm very pleased that I'm done with the skirts, because that was one of the, like, 14 projects I want to have done by Christmas. Uh, help. <laughs> Let's talk about the last work in progress that I have, that I had no business casting on. Because I now have two projects I really want to knit on, and deadline edits that I should knit on. Why would I be starting another one? Well, it's all you guys' fault, all of you guys out there on the internet. You made me do this. Everyone who's taking part in Stephen West's Starflake Mystery Knit Along, it's on you. I can't be held accountable for my reckless casting on. It's convincing? I don't know. So, spoiler alert if you don't want to be spoiled for Clue 1. But Clue 1 came out weeks ago, so I think we will be fine. Uh, just don't say I didn't warn you in case you don't want to see it, but you probably do, because it's been a while ago and everyone's posted it, so we probably haven't... I don't think you could miss it. This is what's on my needles. Yes, I just dropped it, nearly finishing one row, but not quite. So I've done all these parallelograms, and they are indeed looking like a star flake, whatever that is. And I'm now just alternating these stockinette sections in the main colour and the garter bits in the contrast. The light one being the contrast in this case. It's looking really cool and I'm just, I think it's like I don't really wear these kinds of handouts who wore shawls that much, but it's the process. The process of knitting a Stephen West shawl in particular. I'm like, even if I never wear this, which actually I might do because it goes really well in my wardrobe, I, am I showing you in the wrong side? No, I'm not. <laughs> I. I'm just, I'm going to be a better knitter for going through this process, right? And it, it, it's just one of those things you can, like, put your mind to. Uh, I think if you are done a Stephen West show, you know what I mean. It's just, you get to experience something very new and different. That's why I want to do this. It just looked very appealing in that sense and I like the bold graphic design of this I don't like them when they're that much when there's a lot of noise there's a lot of fluff and speckles and colors and ah uh, uh, I often end up toning that down quite a bit but I quite like a lot of the recent shorts by Stephen West that are very graphic and bold more on that in acquisitions but we are actually going to start talking about acquisitions right now so aside from this that is just clue one i of course want to talk to you about the yarn that i used so one of these you have may have seen years ago on this podcast it's part of two skeins that i was given by my friend hannah of circus tonic handmade it is, I believe, a merino silk nylon blend that is so shiny and luxurious, it's ridiculous. And this was before we actually knew each other. She decided to dye me these colours and call it... Uh, I believe she called it a Norwegian in London. So it's my colourway. And I've had these two skates for a long time. And I thought, oh, what am I going to make with it? It would be enough for a shawl, but I don't know what shawl. And it's just been like on my mind so much. I didn't know what to do with it. And then this shawl came up and I was like, well, I really only need two contrast skeins. And as you will really know, I'm quite hung up on combining different bases. I'm quite scared of it, which is ironic given I just put it in a bit of phenyl into my Navia skirt. But you know. I decided to look up yarns on Ravelry. I just looked up yarns that had the same fiber content and I looked for yarns with the same percentage. So I basically ticked the fibers in the search box and then I just scrolled through until I saw the percentages that I that was the same as the skein that I had and I assumed it was the same base. Uh, and I looked up the, the dyers that came up and if they, it rang a bell, you know, I've heard about them, that obviously helped with, you know, confidence and uh, I just saw these colours. And this is what I ended up with. Now granted, I, on the website, thought this was going to be kind of more purple, I guess, but it's actually a bit more, has more brown to it. It's not brown by no means but it's a kind of prune 
this is pretty true to color it's really good so together this actually picks up a lot what is in here and it works out really well together but as you may see this i had a problem winding this i did not i don't think they are the same vase they have the exact same properties but this feels a lot more slick and unruly and this is quite firm and gives a sort of I'm even seeing it in the parallelograms. You see this is quite, it, it feels quite fixed. Like I could do socks of this, but this feels like a bit all over the place, like a, a single ply merino almost. They behave subtly differently and I'm gonna try to be okay with it. It's fine, it's fine, whatever. Um, but I'm sure you're wondering where I got this yarn. This is Mon Sheep Shop from France. Uh, <laughs> So I had heard about this yarn already, so I thought, yes, finally I get to try it. And I I normally never order yarn online. I not hand dyed anyway. I tend to see that in person and buy in person, which I know is quite different from how most people buy hand dyed yarns. And their website is in French, so I, I don't know any from French, France, French, wow. Um so I'm just trying my best, guessing at words too stubborn to use Google Translate and it's fine all the way through to you know paying and everything and then I get an error <sighs> and I think everything was fine but of course me being me I just I sent them an email with like ah, I don't know what happened I got an error sorry I don't know fr French uh, so, so I just sent them an email just going ah, I don't know what happened I got an error sorry I don't speak any French and I got a lovely reply and a reassurance that it had been fixed, you know, just like that. It was no problem. And that um, she knew who I was. So uh, when I received my order, it was not just my order. So I'm going to show you what I got in addition to these two skeins. I have another two up in the shelf somewhere, but I quite like to keep it out of the way for tidiness. As, as though this room is tidy, it's really nothing but. But I got the most beautiful shipment i got some bags of tea and also got this beautiful card and it has a knitted autumn leaf on it look at that so that was really sweet it even sparkles i don't know if it's an autumn leaf or an acorn actually it could be an acorn i don't mind it being both nice so i got a very lovely card that said you know thank you and uh that she wanted to send me some extra skeins. So I got some extra skeins. Even has my name on the thing. So, okay, let's look at the skeins. Oh yeah. So these will be amazing for both the, the Aran Chunky Mittens in my club and the DK Weight ones. So that would be the first three designs in case you wanted some softer yarn options. This would certainly be it. Look at that. Yeah, so that's one cheap shop. Just to give you the a peek at the logo. And a bit of information. 100% Merino Bio. I'm going to assume that means organic or, you know, non superwash. It does. And yeah, 100 grams, 166 meters. It's iron weight. So that's two skeins that I was given from one cheap shop. Thank you so much, Cindy. That was very generous of you. These are beautiful. I. Oh, don't want to make more mittens. Could do more mittens. Anyway, thank you. They, they feel really good. Honestly, if, if you're fussy about prickly yarn, you might want to consider these. Just squish, squish. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. I just, oh. There's a lot of yarn that's ended up in my stash the past two weeks. I had a week's break. If I, I already mentioned that. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I went to the knitting and stitching show. I did mention that. Uh, it's a annual or biannual show in London. They do do a spring one as well, but that's over in Olympia, Kensington, and it's more focused on sewing. Whereas the autumn one is over at Ali Pali, aka Alexandra Palace in North London, and it's supposedly a little bit leaning more towards knitting, but I would say not enough. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed myself. I mostly went to hang out with friends uh, i actually went on two days because i went the first day because my friends were there and then the second day because i had a agreement with two other friends so yeah 
So very sorry for my friends who went in the other two days because it's going on four days in total that I eventually just had to bail and hang out at home being very tired because it's a very big event. And I have a lot of thoughts about it. I think it's quite interesting how it's so different from like shows like Edinburgh Yarn Festival, Yarndale, um, Fiber East, uh, Unravel, all those events that we know the most, the online community that supports independent makers. Wow, we are only a fraction of the knitting industry at large. Like the, the bigger industry is what you will see at the Knitting and Stitching show. You will see, you know, Rowan having their own booth. Theodore, Stylecraft, King Cole. This is what the majority of the British knitting industry looks like. The whole Instagram thing is a small part of that world. I feel like that may be different in uh, America, North America and uh, Australia and around there. It seems like the knitting scene is by and large the kind of online scene. Um, not entirely yet, it's just a little bit more so than what it's here. I know you still have your kind of box stores kind of that's sort of separate in the way that we do but there's a lot of craft shops here that just is just an entirely different world and that's often the world you will see catered for more at the knitting and stitching show. I have thought both in favour and against that. I think it is good to see that because sometimes all the other knitting events don't have that at all and people who are expecting something like the Knitting and Stitching show go to all these other ones and kind of feel a bit lost and confused and just kind of like why is everything different? <laughs> uh, but on the other hand I feel like sometimes the Knitting and Stitching show caters more to the stereotypical knitter of a certain age, of a certain background, of certain, you know, you know what I mean? So and there's nothing wrong with that, obviously you know that, uh, but when I come there and I'm a 29 year old girl, female, woman, wow well, I guess I'm a woman by now, it's been, it's been 11 years silly, uh, I feel like they haven't really thought about me, that I was gonna be there too and I am pretty close to their target demographics and I think about all the people who are even further away from their ideal demographic and you just must feel like that's not your place and I don't doesn't feel right doesn't seem right uh and they were actually this this was really cool but mm, there were uh, this prize award thing and at the end we got these giveaway these goodie bags super generous i can't complain about like getting stuff that they just handed out to the people who were there amazing but a lot of the stuff that was in there was clearly intended for people who were 60 plus like i got this magazine which was would probably have been perfect for say my mom who just got retired if she read English but you know assuming she was if she were British it's not a magazine you will give a 29 year old and it sort of seems like they just assume that you would be that age bracket age bracket if you're there and maybe that's a good thing because that age bracket is hardly ever catered to anywhere else so I'm neither for or against that's basically my conclusion I just kind of felt feel a little bit out of place um but maybe that's my turn you know that's entirely fair i i guess maybe what i want to see the, those worlds cross over a bit more see the knitting and stitching show cater a bit to those of us online and i want to see see the other shows that cater to those of us who are online also cater to those who are completely unaware of that world and make it a bit more welcoming and sort of what is this all about because i remember being in that place where i you know fumbled around online and found uh hand out yard and indie patterns and kind of trying to make it fit with my world that was so much you know three commercial companies and their yarns and their patterns and that's it uh it's a, it's a learning curve um Anyway, I have a lot of thoughts about that. If you guys want me to talk more about that in a video where I have a bit more time to do so, let me know in the comments below. If you have maybe more questions, more thoughts about it that I haven't covered, uh, my thoughts are not fully formed on this. I literally didn't even plan to talk about it, but I just did, so, hey. 
so another thing I got sent shortly after I put up last episode was a massive packet of everything I have sent to Nitography. Patricia of Nitography had a trunk show with my mitten and sock designs over at the Oslo Knitting Festival and the TRD Knitting Festival in Trondheim, my hometown. Uh, she is based just outside my hometown, so uh, that was really cool. So thank you for kind of letting me be there even though I couldn't be there, which I'm still really bummed about. And for that she had also made these progress keepers and she sold them there and I got a few to give away and then she sent me so many more there's a lot of them in here I'm gonna show you what they look like they are so cool I feel like I may have before I feel like I should have done that before whether I have or not is another case but look at them so that's they're so funny so you can just like wear them like this if you want you can have them on your project whatever i don't think i will be selling these i feel like these are for patricia to sell from her shop if she still wishes to do so uh you can obviously ask her if she still, she still sells them but what i think i'll be using these for is to hand out at yarn shows that i attend if I meet someone who is wearing a skein in its design. I came up with that uh, during a live stream. I think I came up with it. Maybe it was one of you viewers. I'm sorry if I took credit for that. Um, so that's what I'm going to be using these for. So whatever the next show is. Maybe that's Make Joy in London. Or I mentioned Make Joy by the way. You should come. It will be fun if you're coming to Susan Crawford's retreat which I'm going to talk more about and if you're coming to Unravel yeah I'm going to be trying to remember to bring these and hand it out to whoever I meet who is wearing a skin in this design that's, that's basically how that's going to work so I am going a little bit back and forth between things I was talking about the knitting and stitching show and apparently forgot to mention if I bought anything there that's, that's just great I did. I bought those knit pro needles. I was also given a beautiful skein and I bought some yarn. It's not the yarn that you would think I bought but I did. Uh, this is the kind of yarn that you know as the yarn snows kind of scoff at and go but I got some King Cole yarn. This is the raffia yarn which is kind of like gift wrapping bands it's what's it made of cellulose rail um so it's kind of like it feels like kind of straws i do believe it's plant-based and i got five of these they were really you know reduced price i think they were like two pounds each or something and I have always wanted to try this stuff, uh, maybe for crochet. I can imagine it's going to be quite uncomfortable to knit with. So I'm toying with the idea of doing some crochet bag or something. Now we all know that my crochet skills are not quite there. So that would be interesting in itself. But at least I have the yarn now, if we can even call it that. Wow, it's the most yarn snobby thing I've ever said. Sorry. Um, yeah, just going to give you a close up here just to give you an idea. Yeah, this, I feel like the sound just helps with the, you know, yeah, <laughs> so. King Cole Raffia, you know, it's basically the same stuff that Wool and the Gang have, that's also called Raffia, or Ra Ra Raffia. It's just like, this brand is cheaper, so I went with that, but you just use whatever you want. I. I just want to try something different. So that's what I ended up with. Some King Cole yarn. Huh. Now I did say I was given a skein. I, like I said, you know, the knitting and stitching show is a very different scene from the other yarn shows. Like, just to give you an idea, I I only saw one wool and honey and one tecumseh. That was basically it during the whole show, which is really crowded and huge. Uh, and so also, you know, it's only just a couple of people who would say hi to me and recognize me uh, just because, again, it's a very different scene. And one of those people 
offered to give me a skein. I got to choose the color from this range. So this is from Wonderfully Woolly. So I this reads 75% blue face luster, 25% Gotland. 350 meters per 100 grams. And this is the charcoal colorway. So nice. So thank you so much for letting me pick this one out. It's just, oh, it's just scrumptious. I'm thinking this could be a, a really nice hat. I am a bit wary of knitting fingering weight hats because I know they will have to be knit really tightly for being an effective hat and uh, it's gonna take ages, but that's why I think this will be eventually. Thank you so much. It was really generous of you. Which, by the way, thank you to everyone who helped me with my D-stash. It's over. It's done. And if I didn't mention it last time, <laughs> the money went to buy myself a heater. A little fan heater that is very energy efficient. Has a thermostat. And it's just really, really nice. And way better than the one I had before that would shoot sparks and eventually got stolen. I am very happy. Thank you so much. I'm not going to be cold anymore. So you may have thought that I was very modest at a knitting and stitching show. What? Really? Just a raffia yarn and some knit pro needles and a skein were given for free? What? That's... Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's because I went to a shop earlier, okay? I, I went to Wild and Woolly just a couple of days before and... The Rare Natura have just made the colorway of the year. Right? Right? And yeah, I didn't have to buy it there and then. I could have bought it any time. They will always have it there. I didn't need... But... I bought six. So... This whole bag is full. So... Um... I want to make the stag head pullover by Nora Gorm that a lovely viewer sent me the pattern for. I think this yarn will be perfect. The color will be amazing. It will be a burgundy sweater with a deer on it for skein deer. Just the idea of that is making me so excited. <laughs> it will be the ultimate skein deer sweater that isn't my design or anything, but whatever. It's going to have a deer on it. In burgundy it's basically gonna be my uniform that and you know this black skirt that I've just made myself the Rare Natura Gilead oh you probably want to know a bit more about the yarn whatever so um where are we? ah 250 meters per hundred grams so kind of a classic DK although this knits up as heavy as Aaron because it's like weird magic yarn 100% uh, wool is actually I believe a French merino but not super wash oh I love this so much it is very soft and lovely, wouldn't bother you. Um, if you're sensitive, I think you'd be fine with this. I, I just love this. I just want everything in the Rare Natura yarns. So the last two things I have left to cover in terms of purchases uh, are two books. One will get a raving review and the other one maybe not so much. So maybe we should start with a maybe not so much. Um, this one came in the mail for me just now and I had a good look through before I started recording and I kind of had suspicions that this wasn't, this is a bit of an exaggeration based on the reviews I read. It's not 6,000, it's not even a thousand. It's just, you gotta use a lot of maths to make this number accurate. It's more like maybe, it's, it's a two digit number of, combin of things you could do. But obviously if you put all the combinations together and you know, multiply them by each other, then sure. It's not a bad book. It, it, it's I'm kind of going to have to agree with a lot of the reviews that I've read, which is basically it's a very good idea. I'm just not sure it's well executed. Um, so it gives you a lot of um, options to... I'm sounding very negative now. I'm very glad I bought it. It's going to be useful. But it gives you a lot of options for how to shape garments. So, you know, satin sleeves, saddle shoulder, raglan. That's basically the groups that it covers. And also like the straight silhouettes. I guess it's a drop shoulder, isn't it? Uh, it gives you stitch counts per for different gauges for different sizes, so a little bit like the Anne Bod books. <sighs> it's 
just first of all it's entirely made for people who knit flat sure i could convert that to knitting in the round it's kind of my specialty to make stuff in the round even when they're not meant to by steek so i can do that but it just feels a little bit dated by all this knit flat stuff not that knitting flat is by any means passe it, the other thing that i found a bit a bit a bit weird about it is that it will give separate kind of chapters for different sleeve constructions and shapings so what that means is it will have a satin sleeve for a straight silhouette a satin sleeve for a tapered silhouette a satin sleeve for a waist shaped silhouette a satin sleeve for an a-line silhouette why couldn't you just have one for a satin sleeve and then the shaping separate chapters because then you will find also there's a raglan for a-line a raglan for tapered a raglan for hourglass a raglan for straight and you just kind of like could i say a lot of space here by just keeping the sleeve constructions separate from the body shaping and the same thing is for the sleeves so there will be a raglan sleeve that is more shaping this way, one that's shaped this way, one that's shaped straight. And then I do the same thing for the saddle shoulder, and it's the same thing for. And I'm just. Why not just say, okay, once you have that stitch count, you can shape one way or the other? And it would just save up so much space. Like, I just feel like this could have been a fifth of the size. And I, I don't even understand the point of giving different stitch counts for different gauges and sizes. You could just give measurements. And people who are going to use this to design will know simple gauge by measurement calculations. That's like a very core part of designing. Like if you can't do that, I don't know how you design. Um, so it just seems like it's just trying to be really helpful, but then it's not and then it is and it's just like i'm sounding very negative now i'm just like i guess i was just expecting a lot more about the same time having read reviews so i was like okay so i think i am gonna have to decide how this book is going to be useful for me to just pick out the bits that i like there are lots of things that i do like i like all the neckline instructions how you can shape them how you can add to them once you pick up stitches and do different necks um a bit about edging there is a nice overview of the sort of standard construction methods which isn't going to be unique to this book by no means there will be you know books about setting sleeves and saddle shoulders and so forth in other books you know like the unbound books that i probably will say i prefer because the other thing that kind of bored me about this is that you won't really get to see what the different shapes are so i'm just going to show you an example because i'm just talking this is a illustration of a satin sleeve with a kind of shaped body again this is what i mean right this shaped body could have been a separate chapter so you wouldn't have to repeat it for every sleeve construction and you could only do the sleeve constructions once as well that would have been more just save more paper really um but that's not the point i was going to make now the point i was going to make now is this is all you get to see this flat piece of stock in that that's it so if you don't really know the potential for satin sleeve that a satin sleeve can end up looking like this you're probably gonna look at that and think when am i gonna use how am i gonna use that you know it's kind of assuming you know a lot and very little at the same time so you kind of yeah I think it just needed a clearer target target audience maybe either you target for very experienced knitters or not very experienced knitters i think it's very i think it can be very hard to please both but i'm not gonna i'm not hating on it by no means it's not a book that i regret buying i i would just say you know know what you want from it it's not gonna be your go-to construction book it's just gonna be one of those things i'm like ah I want to add this particular neckline to the design I'm working on. I will be working on this design, not based on what's in here, but I will try to pick up some useful things if I really have no clue how to do it. So, pros and cons. Um, yeah. I feel like I just have to be like, weirdly critical sometimes, because like sometimes if I show any products on the podcast, people see it as an immediate endorsement, even though I haven't even, even had time to open it. So I just try to be a bit careful and just say, you know, pros and cons so yeah i'm happy to have it you know 
I can read from the back if you want to know stuff about it. Um, with 6,000 pullover possibilities, renowned knitwear designer and teacher, Melissa Liebman enables every knitter to make his or her ideal sweater. With a straightforward and encouraging approach, knitters will be able to use any yarn from super fine to bulky. That's true, that's a plus, that's really good. Make any size from extra small to 4X. Can we just let go of those labels? That doesn't tell me anything. I don't know what 4X is. Okay, it actually is a 58 inch boss, so you know, fair. Um, just, I don't know that. Just say the measurements. It's more global that way. Uh, calculate yarn amounts. Mix and match silhouette. Calculate yarn amounts. Hey, that, that's pretty good. I missed that. That's, that's good. Mix and match silhouette sleeves and necklines. Yep, that's why I bought it. Adjust pattern lengths for ideal fit. That's not, that's something I feel like anyone can do. Okay, I'm being a bit negative now. Uh, add pockets, zippers, buttons, and more. So if you definitely want to add but um, pockets, you may find this useful. I have had a number of people ask about pockets for the skirt. I didn't add one, but it will be really easy for you if you just want to add like a pocket that is just a patch over the, the fabric and just sew it on. If you want to have it more as a hole in the skirt where the pocket is on the inside, which I think will work better with this design, Personally, I prefer more slanted hole and that's why I didn't add it because I think that would be really hard uh, But if you don't mind it being a horizontal hole, you can literally just do it the way you do an afterthought heel so Basically pull in put in needles for the row above The row you're gonna unravel and below so then you unravel the one in the middle and pick up the stitches and knit Knit in the round the other book I bought I actually haven't ever bought Stephen West's physical booklets. I have a lot of digital patterns of his. This is my first. And it's, I mean, I also really love the first Best Knits book. And the second one isn't really up my alley just because of its garments. And I think we just have a very different style. Um, also this picture. <sighs> Doesn't that make you happy? Look at that dog. <laughs> so. I'm just going to show you my favourite shawls, but I'm sure you know who Stephen West is and the stuff that he's up to. But the whole photo shoot in this, I just, it's perfect. I, and yeah, these are basically the two shawls I want to show you, so that made it easy for me. These are the two shawls I want more than anything right now. Obviously after I finish the Starflake. Yeah, it's just full of amazing shawls. You, it already has all the patterns up on Ravelry so you can look at them individually there and decide for yourself but yeah it's basically a pattern booklet it's full of amazing photos the whole photo shoot like I said is just a treat um I just yeah there's a lot of things I want to knit here okay this is pretty cool too look at that shoulder I just this, this is on the top of my list I think Yep, yeah, that's and the Rockefeller is the shape. I, I don't know how he's done it because I normally don't like crescent shapes, but that, yes, yes. So, happy purchase. It's quite big. It's like his usual best knits have been quite like magazine thin. This is the book. It's big, so. Yeah, that's what I have about knitting. I am going to be teaching at a Susan Crawford knitting retreat up in the Lake District. Lake District. And I'm so excited. And I'm doing my research now for my talks. I'm going to do two talks. One, I'm going to talk about the history of cyber mittens. And then later, I'm going to talk about how to actually make them. A little bit of construction, theoretically. I'm not going to instruct you. Susan's going to be doing that. But I will be talking about the sort of... Just like how you understand them. You know, it will make sense. It'll be fine. Um, I'm gonna get to be like a teacher or lecturer and like, yeah, it'll be fun. So I just want to talk about that for a bit. I am going through the history now and it's just really cool. Like just learning about, you know, when knitting came to Norway, which is a lot later than you would think. And then fast forward to the mid 1800s, which is when the first Serbian mitten ever came to be by a, 
young 16 year old sheep herders shepherdess wow sheep i mean yeah shepherdess <laughs> in sarbu which is in trendelag which is where i'm from so i'm going to be talking about that history the significance that the sarbu maidens played in wedding traditions and kind of a little bit of craftivism that they had locally in sarbu and eventually it became part of the industry and so on so that's going to be the talk. But obviously we're just going to hang out and knit and be in beautiful surroundings. And there's rumours that there's going to be an alpaca there. So yeah. So I just thought I'd put that out there that there should be spaces left if you want to go. And yeah, I am very excited. Lake District is apparently just beautiful. Susan Crawford is absolutely awesome. So yes. I'm going to try to remember to link to that below. If I forget, let me know. So that's a lot stuff going on and the sun is setting it's very early for that that's all that i have for you this week hope you enjoy this slightly longer than usual episode and i hope it won't be too long until i see you next time as ever thank you so much for all your support in supporting me as a designer and all that stuff so yeah enjoy the new patterns and this episode and i will see you next time bye